This is Optimal Relationships Daily, Episode 420, How to Be a Parent Your Child Wants to Talk to, by Dr. Aaron Leonard with Gottman.com. Hey, lovelies, and welcome back. I'm Joss Marie, and today I'll be narrating a parenting post about how you can keep the lines of communication open with your child. And if you'd like to hear more posts like this one in the future, you can go ahead and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any. We actually usually organize the episodes by keeping family and parenting posts towards the end of the week. Just a little FYI. And before I go any further, I know it's pretty obvious, but I'm still super congested. As I mentioned in the last few episodes that my family's getting over the respiratory flu and I'm still holding on to this congestion. So today I started using a neti pot. I can't believe I'm just hopping onto that bandwagon now, but it felt so good and I had some relief afterwards. So I'm hoping after some persistent use of my neti pot that I can maybe sound a little less congested next week. Uh, Keep your prayers in there for us. And I also want to take a moment to give a huge shout out to my son, Talon. He turns three tomorrow. Happy early birthday, Tal. Hard to believe I actually started hosting Optimal Relationships Daily just before Tal's first birthday. So April's a pretty big milestone month for a lot of reasons. (sighs) Tal, where do I start? And I promise I'm going to try to hold it together for you over here. (laughs) Whoa. Tal. You've grown into such a vibrant little dude, and I am so, so lucky that God chose me to be your mama. You're an absolute thrill to be around, and I have you to thank for making simple daily tasks like running to the grocery store so eventful. You make every moment worthwhile and have taught me to slow down and do the same. Your curiosity is contagious, your persistence is admirable, and your nurturing and protective nature is heartwarming. Not to mention, your sister lights up every time you walk into a room. You can literally say anything, and she cracks up laughing. Meanwhile, your dad and I are over here, barely getting her to crack a smile. Your dad calls you JJ, or Joss Jr., and I cannot tell you how proud that makes me feel. Not because you're literally my twin, but because I am so, so grateful that the reason you're my twin is due entirely to the enormous amount of time we've been fortunate to spend together over the past three years. In the beginning, there were lots of sleepless nights, like 18 months worth. (laughs) But you and I had lots of midnight snuggles and rocking chair visits that I'll never forget. Tal, you've taught me more about patience than I've learned in all of my 31 years combined. Full disclosure, sometimes you can be a little stinker in your inherent stubbornness quite frustrating, like when you refuse to let us brush your teeth. But in the end, I would give anything to relive the sleepless nights and the teeth brushing affairs a thousand times over, actually make it a million times over. Because if that meant that I could relive all the grocery store visits, the outdoor excursions, days spent at the children museum, beach or parks, pre-bedtime chat sessions ending with us hiding from a T-Rex, all the snuggles, the hugs, and the I love yous, I would. Tell your mom and dad love you so much. And I know I can speak for the both of us when I say that you've made us better parents and even better versions of ourselves. And for that, Tal, you deserve nothing but the best birthday filled with lots of dinos, dark chocolate, and belly-filled laughter. Love, your congested mama. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump right into the episode. I'm super excited to hear what Dr. Aaron Leonard has to say about creating a closer parent-child relationship. So let's dive in and start optimizing your life. How to Be a Parent Your Child Wants to Talk to by Dr. Aaron Leonard with Gottman.com. As a child therapist, the most common complaint I hear from parents is he just won't talk to me. Feeling estranged from your own child is painful, and it has implications for the child. Research indicates the most important predictor of a child's emotional and psychological stability is the closeness of the parent-child relationship. Obviously, if the child is not opening up when they are upset, the relationship is not as close as it needs to be. These are two habits that parents routinely engage in that shut down communication and drive a child away. Negative feelings and mistaking sympathy for empathy. Sympathy versus empathy. 
When a child is truly in distress because they feel hurt, disappointed, worried, or angry, they desperately need their parent. Yet often, parents don't want to see their child feeling negatively, so their first instinct is to tell their child not to feel the way they do. Before they think, statements such as don't be disappointed or don't be mad escape. This results in the child feeling ashamed of how they feel, compounding the hurt. Moreover, the knowledge that their parent does not understand leaves them feeling alone, which is detrimental. Basically, the child feels that opening up about how they feel makes them feel worse. Statements to avoid. Don't worry. Don't feel that way. Don't be disappointed. Don't be like that. Don't be mad. You are too sensitive. A better idea is to empathize. Honor their feelings. Feelings are never wrong. It's what kids do with feelings that can get them in trouble. Examples of empathy include, That's a big worry. I get it. You are upset. I would be too. You have every right to feel disappointed. I felt like that when I was your age. You are mad. I understand. You have every right. It hurts to see someone do something you want to be able to do but can't yet. You are mad. I'm sure you have a good reason. I want to hear about it. After you give them a solid dose of empathy, the child feels understood and connected to you, which means they immediately feel better and will want your help in problem solving. In many cases, the empathy is all they need to feel better. Simply knowing their parent understands allows them to feel secure and forge ahead. In addition, just because you empathize with how your child feels does not automatically mean you are condoning bad behavior. For example, my son came in the door angry last week. He slammed the door and threw his coat down. I said, you are mad, I don't know why, but you probably have a very good reason and I want to hear about it. But." You can't throw your coat. Go pick it up. After he picked up his jacket, he immediately came to me and told me he was upset about a conflict he got into with a friend. Empathy wins. Here's how it works. Empathy creates good vagal tone in a child's brain and immediately calms them. After receiving empathy, they settle down and can logically think through problems with you. They also feel understood and close to you, which allows them to forge ahead with a sense of security. No parent wants a child who feels sorry for themselves, plays the victim, or is overly dramatic. And maybe that is the fear that prevents a parent from being empathetic. However, honoring their child's feelings is actually what prevents a sense of entitlement or a victim mentality in a child. Sympathy, on the other hand, disrupts any chance of emotional attunement and tempts parents to enable. The parent saves and rescues their child from negative feelings instead of helping them work through difficult feelings. For example, On the way home from hockey practice one night, my eight-year-old son, Jimmy, said to me, Mom, I was the worst one tonight. I'm the worst one every night. I barely got put in. Now, I have two choices, the sympathetic response or the empathetic response. Number one, the sympathetic response. Poor guy, I'm going to call your coach and talk to him. I don't think it's fair that he benches you for most of the practice. Or number two, the empathetic response. That hurts, kiddo. It hurts to feel like you're the worst one. I get it. I've felt like that a lot in my life. It stinks. Keep at it. It will get better. In essence, the sympathetic response tempts us to enable and ask the rules be changed or concessions be made for a child, which teaches them to play the victim. Also, it requires no emotional investment on the parent's part because the parent becomes the powerful saver and rescuer, which strokes the parent's ego. It is the easy way out. The empathetic response requires the parent shift from how they feel to how the child feels. It's emotional attunement. It's the parent remembering how it feels to be the worst one at something so they can relate to their child. It's selfless and it puts the child first emotionally. When there is emotional attunement, the child feels understood and connected to you, which allows them to feel secure and more able to forge ahead and try again. Empathy creates a rugged work ethic and resilience in a child. The child will thrive on adversity instead of breaking down when negative things happen. Empathy creates brave and strong human beings. Stay close to your child. Empathize and empower. The reward will be priceless. You just listened to the post titled, How to Be a Parent Your Child Wants to Talk to, by Dr. Aaron Leonard with Gottman.com. 
I am a firm believer in helping our kids feel like they can trust us and talk to us about their troubles. They deserve to know that we won't trample over their feelings or shut them down by calling them too sensitive. While it can take some practice to know the difference between sympathy and empathy, isn't it worth the effort to give our children psychological and emotional stability? I know that I'm personally grateful to Dr. Aaron Leonard and the Gottman Institute for explaining this difference and for helping us learn how to build a close parent-child relationship. And on that note, we'd like to mention that the Gottman Institute has a newsletter called The Marriage Minute. Over 40 years of research with over 1,000 couples has proven that small things often create big changes over time. Simply sign up for the newsletter at oldpodcast.com marriage. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and say that's a wrap. Thanks so much for coming on by. Have an amazing weekend, and I hope to see you again next week, where your optimal life awaits.